Hello everybody, welcome to Blank Screen, getting started with digital video production, an intro to video production equipment and software. So my name is Tom Sternad, uh, welcome and uh, you know thanks for joining me today. Uh, the goal today is to really give you an overview of what digital video production is about, uh, the tools that you can access through the creator space and our library partners and the software, and just to get kind of wrap our heads around the process so that uh, we, we get rid of any kind of uh, fears of getting into digital video production. And really, it's just a lot of fun to explore and there's a lot of ways we can explore it as well. So we have some tools that you can take out. You can also use your own devices and we have, we're gonna have more workshops on uh, using your own devices in the future as well. So we're really excited to be able to show you know, the, all the ways that you can do that because video is in our pockets now. Basically, we have smartphones and we have all this ability to create video content and then do the editing even on our phones. So that's the amazing thing. We carry around a, a digital, digital video production center in our pockets. So that's uh, really cool. But there's still amazing technology and tools so that we can go to the next level and, uh, and create things as well. So there's many ways to do it. There isn't a right or wrong way. The main thing is to be creative to explore things, to express yourself, and really just to still have fun as you learn and do this. So that's that's our goal. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, continue here. So I just want to thank all our partners in this project. So we have the Canon Council for the Arts. We also have our library partners. So we have the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now in terms of the uh, some of the equipment and what's available, uh, our uh, partners at the Blue Mountains Public Library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library, we have the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, uh, this model right here, uh, that you can access to create digital video with. So there's a whole kit with lenses, you can get a video tripod, there's lights and, and all of this equipment that you can get through the Blue Mountains Public Library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. You can also access iPads through all the libraries. And there's Creator Space iPads that have some of our digital arts uh, computer software on it. There's also this general iPads as well. So any of them have a camera. And then you can also use your own device. And you can use other video cameras as well. We also have 360 video cameras available at all three library partners. Those can be used to film as well to shoot digital video. So that's the really fun part. So let's look at, you know, we're going to go through some things and really just, just to get an understanding, you know, what is digital video? video formats and frame rates, image control techniques, framing, shot sizes, focus and exposure. Get through all this vocabulary. Lens types, wide angle to telephoto or zoom, video with personal devices, iPad or an iPhone, video with photography camera, so you can also use that. You can use a DSLR, like a photo camera that we have available through all our partners. We have a Canon 6D full frame DSLR that you can shoot video with. Then we have video with video cameras and digital video digital cinema cameras such as the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and our Kodak Pix Pro 360 camera. You can do video. You can also do video with the GoPro Fusion and GoPros. Those are a great tool as well. Uh, then I'll put up uh, my email so you can also uh, give me a, uh, send me emails with any questions you have because you want to make sure you can access everything and get your video productions rolling. Okay, so what's digital video? Digital video, it's a series of still images or frames that are captured by a light sensitive sensor and it's translated to digital data, ones and zeros, and it's stored on a memory device, solid state memory card, digital tape, hard drive, or even cloud storage nowadays. So that's what's available, how it works, digital video. So it's individual frames captured and then it's played back as a series of images to, to replicate motion. And this is where film comes from, motion, motion, uh, pictures. That's the whole idea is capturing 24 individual photos and playing them back at 24 frames per second to make it look as if things are moving. So this was, uh, uh, you know, 1895, I think it was uh, off the top of my head. Uh, we started with, uh, with cinema, uh, and uh, motion picture. And now we're here with digital cinema, digital, uh, video, and we're able to do the same thing with uh, using uh, storage on drives, on hard drives, SD cards, and so on. So it's really cool that uh, that uh, history. So video format. So the formats consist of the amount of horizontal and vertical lines that occur, uh, and that uh, you know the vertical lines of resolution that form the image size of the video. So formats continue to evolve and expand. Original format, standard definition, was 720 by 480. So that's the original square-like TVs that we we're used to in the past, and that was uh, the NTSC 720 by 480. 
Now we have video format, so you can see there's SD, we go into Full HD, 1920 by 1080, 4K, UHD, 3840 by 2160, and there's something called 4K DCI, which is the cinema uh, ratio, it's 4096 by 2160, and it leaves a little black bar on the top. Uh, this isn't necessary to scale this image, but just gives you an idea of how we're, you know, getting bigger and bigger in terms of resolution and amount of pixels. And, um, you know, in film, traditionally in the past, like, you know, we're talking about 20K type resolution uh, in, in film. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, we're still, we're getting to that point. There's, a, there's 12K cameras, the 8K is becoming something, but 4K is quite a beautiful format. And that's what we offer with the uh, Blackmagic Cinema Camera Kits with our libraries. Uh, frame rate. So this is important. How many frames do you capture per second? And and then when they're played back. So 30 frames per second is uh, 30 FPS. That's the original uh, video standard. So film from the beginning was 24 frames per second. Uh, once it got standardized to sound. And that's really important. So sound made it, required some sort of standardization. It used to be 16, 18, they had different frame rates. It would be hand cranked. So, you know, it was roughly... 18 frames per second or 24 frames per second and that, then it became motorized and it was precisely 24 frames per second video 30 frames per second and then I make a note here the actual is 29.97 frames per second just because of uh, the technical requirements of uh, North American electrical power so that's uh, just the little nuances but that's been kind of the tradition film is 24 video is 30 and and we go from there uh, so again, original frame rate of video is 30 frames, and that's for television. Uh, in 1999, video started become cap became capable of filming at 24 frames per second. So Star Wars Episode One, uh, kind of a, a milestone of that. It started, you know, one of that revolutionary things of starting to shoot digital cinema at 24 frames per second. So no longer using film, but shooting it as digital video, 24 frames per second. Now generally, even the iPads, some of them. Uh, depending on the model, digital video is generally capable of shooting 24 frames per second and more. So we get even more frame rates. So here's many of the different types of frame rates that are available in HD and UHD. And again, once we get through these kind of technical ideas, we start to go, okay, now I understand. You know, so what does it mean? So 23.98, that's uh, what uh, matches the 29.97. Again, I said that's because of an electrical, uh, the pulse for the synchronization. Uh, 24 precisely you can shoot as well, that's to match exact film uh, outputting for digital cinema production or projection. 29.97, that's the traditional for film, uh, for television video. 30, you can do exactly 30 if you want. You can do 48 frames per second. This gives you enhanced motion capture. So if you're shooting more frames, there's less motion blur. So it gets sharper. So the higher the frame rates, generally the sharper. 59.94 is becoming a standard for television. Uh, that could be interlaced, so it's a, you know, uh, odd, odd and even frames, 59.94, so it's it's similar to 29.7. It could also be uh, true 59.94, so it's a lot of extra, double the frame rate, again, sharper, used for sports. That's a really standard thing, so not having, a, you know, blurred football throws, you can have it sharper. Uh, 60 frames exactly, then 120 frames, this was something Gemini Man uh, was one of the first to be captured at this rate. So it's ultra uh, high frame rate, it's uh, uh, you know hyper realism is uh, what people have been calling that. Because uh, things get, there's really no blur, it's super sharp, it's hyper realism, more than we're used to in our own vision. Like it's, it's almost uh, a, you know, a little bit different and I think the idea with the sci-fi movie was that it would be that kind of hyper-realism. Okay, so here's the artistic choice. So a whole bunch of technical, and then it's like, great, all these frame rates and resolutions, but we need to look at the why, not just, okay, the technical how, but why? Why do you wanna use different frame rates? So artistic choice, so frame rate should be explored by different types of paint. Each frame rate offers different advantages and disadvantages. So higher frame rates, equal less blur plus sharpness in action. So again, ideal for sports or action shots. Lower frame rates equal more motion blur and softness in action. Neither of these are right or wrong. You just need to look at what's right for your digital video production. What's right for the film? What's right for the story you want to tell?
And then you want to experiment with those as well. So there's nothing wrong with just testing stuff. You know, go and take out one of the cameras, test different frame rates out, and that's fine. Don't worry about filming your opus right away. Look at these technical things and explore the different frame rates. So, you know, do you want a more blurred, less sharp type looking film? A lot of people still shoot 24 frames per second. Uh, I'm, I love that frame rate as well. So I still use that. I'm a big uh, fan of it in terms of its look, a little bit softer and not as much uh, sharpness. Then some people love shooting 60 frames per second because it's extra sharp and they get that kind of extra kind of realism that they like to, to achieve. Again, nothing's right or wrong. What's right for your story or what's right for the project you want to do? Sometimes someone will tell you if you're the cinematographer, they'll tell you, I want this kind of frame rate. So you might not have the choice, but you as a digital artist, you can experiment and try out these choices and see what's right. Okay, so device and storage limitations. Now this is something that might come into play. That's why 24 frames is such a great frame rate still. So frame rates represent individual frames based on the format you choose. So together, this can result in large data creation and storage requirements. Not all devices can support all formats and frame rates. So this starts with even the things like the SD card. So this SD card, uh, this is a, a SanDisk Extreme Pro, 170 megabits per second is the data rate. Now this one, you can shoot HD, you can shoot, I think you can go up to like 60 frames HD, but it won't handle 4K because of the data read write that limits it. Whereas, um, I think I have one in here, let me just see if it's in this one. Yes, this is a newer version, and this, this one is a V version 60, uh, 2, SDXC, 256 gigs, and this is 250 uh, megabits per second. So it's kind of a silver one, and then this is kind of a, like an older version. This can do HD, this can do 4K. And what you'll notice is on the back, this has two rows. The silver one has two rows to read write. This has just one row. So you can see it, it needs to be able to, to access data faster. So, you know, you could be limited by the type of SD card. Um, all of the 4K uh, pocket cinema cameras, the Blackmagic kits, come with a CFast 2.0 card. And that 2.0 card can do 4K. So we've built everything that in the kits that you can shoot 4K. Uh, but, you know, uh, sometimes a DSLR or other cameras, if you have a, a lower speed SD, might not be able to do high frame rates. Generally, you might be in luck with 24 frames. So it could also be not necessarily an artistic choice. It, you might also have technical limitations in the type of uh, device. So start by working with what you have available. So sometimes, you know, why not just shoot in HD? Uh, it's a professional format, you know, in terms of delivery. I'm still delivering a lot of uh, television programs and films in HD, that's that's the general format still. Um, most digital cinemas, I always like to note, that, you know, you're watching films in 2K, which is basically 2048 by 1080. So it's very similar to HD at 1920 by 1080. So most of the, when you go to a cinema, digital projected, unless you're going to like an Ultra AVX or IMAX, uh, you're only watching them in generally in 2K. So it's like watching in HD. HD is a great format, so don't worry. This because the catchphrase is, uh, hey, you need to be in 4K. Think about why do you need to be in 4K? Is it for the resolution? Do you want to be able to 4K? You can technically zoom into things because you have higher resolution. You know, so you, just because it's a catchy, you know, the catchphrase, you know, to shoot in 4K, uh, doesn't mean that you need to. Maybe your project is totally fine in HD. Work with what you have. Maybe your phone can only work in, in HD. You don't have a 4K mode. That's great, start with what you have. Explore that format, perfect things. You can always go to different resolutions. The resolution isn't gonna make you a better filmmaker. It's all about the choices. So frame rates could be an, an interesting play in art, your artistic development. What kind of frame rates do you wanna use? More than, you know, is it 4K or HD? So don't get hung up on, on do you have the latest technology we do have the latest technology for you, but maybe you want to shoot something on your own older iPhone. That's fine. And we're going to look at all the techniques so you can understand how to shoot better. So image control framing. This is really key. So framing is the concept of choosing and designing what's in your frame. So think of your frame as a canvas. 
And there's something called the rule of thirds. So it's taking the canvas, dividing it into three lines horizontally, three lines vertically. Then you have the cross points. And those intersecting cross points are where you put your points of interest. So not right in the center, which technically still covers the points of interest, but if they're off-centered in this kind of a, in this widescreen 16 by nine format, which HD or 4K uses. So here's a sample of a shot that I did, and you can see that the subject is in the crosshairs on the top uh, right of the frame in the rule of thirds and continues into the next one. So his head is there. And on the other side, the, uh, there's nothing there, but that's, this is using the rule of thirds for framing. This is another example using the rule of thirds where the, we have the subjects and the rifle being fired is in frame left cross points and it moves down to the other soldier and you can see the points of interest are within that. So it's, it's a nice rule of thirds type uh, framing. This can be done even with just an iPhone. So you don't need anything fancy to, to still practice framing. You can do it with any kind of video device. So image control, another thing is shot sizes. Different shots help to tell different stories visually. So every video film is made up of different shots. Sometimes you might just have one shot, technically that is possible. And long shots or wide shots start by helping establish the location space. So you can see this is a long shot, full figure of the uh, the people, uh, the characters uh, in the screen, and a, a really wide shot of the entire uh, forest and area and so on. So that's, that's a long shot or establishing shot. Uh, next, we get into a medium shot. So it's kind of the knees and higher, bringing the audience closer to the story in action. Now you can start to see their face, their uniforms, their, uh, uh, you know, what, they're, what they're wearing, their rifles and so on. Then you can get into close-ups and extreme close-ups where it shows important details. So here you can see that it's like paper with gunpowder for filling in the, um, the rifles. And you get these details that you wouldn't see in the wide shots or close-ups. So here's a, you know, some dramatic use. So shot size variety. So what's called the establishing shot. So the wide shot is used to establish your space and you know, your, your images uh, help to t in order to establish a space for the story so we can see where the people are what's going on what's in the background what's in the foreground and so on then we can use a medium shot or a two shot which means two actors in one shot and that again kind of waist and higher or knees and higher medium shot we're getting in closer with them as if we're you know participating in this conversation with them then you can get into close shots and this brings the audience in for dialogue or expressions in this case. So that's the close shot. So it's usually kind of, uh, uh, you know, head and shoulders is the close shot. Close shot, reverse shot. So we go to the other person. So we see the same thing, same idea, head and shoulders. But we, now we get to the other actor's dialogue. And it's also known as the shot, reverse shot. So we have the shot and the reverse shot from one to the other. And that's how it can work really well. So that's great. Then we can get into focus. So what do we put into focus? What do we put out of focus? This is a really important part of film, you know, digital video production and filmmaking. So, you know, everything can be in focus or we select our focus. So selective focus helps us guide the audience and the story. So in this case, you can see we have, you know, the, the foreground of the actors and the background, it's in focus. In this shot, you now start to have less focus in the background, but the focus is on our two actors in the front, in the foreground, and the background is slightly blurred out of focus. So we're guiding the audience to look at the actors more than we are to the background. Now imagine the opposite. If the actors were out of focus and the background is in focus, you'd be, your eyes would be drawn to that background in the painting. This, in this case, it's just there. It's subtle. It's out of focus. It's blurred, but it's not necessarily drawing your attention you're going to stay focused on the actors but if i focused to the painting then you're totally going to look at the painting and you might start to ignore the actors so selective focus is really key in uh, telling a story and we can do this again even with our iphones we can select what is in focus so you might just have the middle in focus so again background and foreground out of focus as you can see the actor on the right is out of focus the background's out of focus only the actor in the middle 
is in focus. So we're deciding that selective focus as well. So image control, exposure. So exposure is controlling how much light is allowed to enter the sensor through the lens or how sensitive the sensor is to light. The smaller the f-stop equals more light. So we offer manual lenses that you can take out from the Blue Mountains Public Library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library that allow you to use these f-stops to go from totally open, like for example f1.4, to more closed, like f8.0. Larger the f-stop, less light, and it's measured in increments. Um, now in terms of, I'm going to just take this lens off and I should be able to, I should be able to see this. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so you can see, it's going to get this into the, the lens. So this is, this is opened up and you'll see it's closing. So you can see a little dot and then it closes. And that's basically going from all the way open. In this case, it's a 3.8 to all the way closed 22. And that's how we can control how much light is going into it. Now, with phones, we control how much light sensitivity is going to the lens. So it has like a fixed aperture, but we're just saying, hey, let's reduce, we can boost or we can reduce how much light sensitivity is happening. So it's not manual like this lens is controlling it with an aperture that's allowing less light in, but we're now controlling it with, uh, you know, boosting or reducing the light sensitivity. So think of it when you hit like your phone and you go, I want to hit, I want the background to be exposed, you tap on it and, it and it darkens the background so it's less exposed, so that it, it gives you proper exposure. So that's how you can work with things. Or you can also use something called uh, uh, auto exposure. And auto exposure can be a tool uh, that you might want to use as well. And that just is the camera's deciding what the uh, overall exposure is. But it's a lot, a lot of fun if you take out one of our kits to use these manual lenses and really see you know, what you see is what you get on the back of the screen. So you can see if something looks good in exposure or something's underexposed, overexposed. Okay, so image control, exposure and your ISO. So ISO is, you can then tell the sensor how sensitive it should be to the light. And that's measured as an ISO or ISO. And it's based on the old traditional film stock. So it can range from 50 ISO to nowadays we can go to 25,000 ISO. The smaller the ISO, the better the image plus detail. So traditionally, like 100 ISO would be low grain and really sharp like and great details. Larger ISO brings in more noise. So in this case, especially with the digital realm, the larger the ISO, there, there starts to be, they can become noise. Um, and that's in the, in the dark areas. You can start to bring up noise where there's light. You can't make light out of nothing. So you always need a little bit of light to at least work even in what they call low light, you still have light. So you can't really just film in total darkness and get an image, you need some sort of light. So that's something important. But the more the ISO goes, the more you can see the, the digitization, like the, the pixelization and the noise that comes in. And with digital video, you get that noise that becomes all the, the little colors like purple and green and yellow and stuff. So it's not very pleasant necessarily, too much noise, but a little bit can work. So you can see around, you know, 6,400 is pretty good, and then it starts to get really noisy at 25,600. Okay, so proper exposure. What is proper exposure? What you see is what you get with digital video, and that's really cool, because in the past when you shot with film, you wouldn't know what you got until you got it developed, and then you watched it back and said, oh no, it's too dark, oh no, it's too bright, it's overexposed. So proper exposure should allow you to see the image properly and to understand what the image is. So I have some examples here where you know, something can be quite dark, but you can still see that there's some soldiers and they're getting ready for a battle. And here's the Collingwood town clock that's, uh, again, pretty dark uh, in its exposure. But that is, to me, looks like a good proper exposure. You can also intentionally uh, overexpose too much light or underexpose too little light to create moods, feelings and expressions. So you can make things a bit darker to make it moodier. You could be shooting in the middle of the day and make it a lot darker, but even on a phone. Now here's the best thing, digital video, here's my advice tip, is you know, it's better to underexpose than overexpose, since the dark shots can be boosted, but you can't really bring something that's overexposed, because in the digital world, it really comes out of the range, and it's blown out, it's called. So you can't really help fix something that's blown out, but you can boost things that are slightly too dark. So always err on the underexposing versus overexposing. That's my uh, advice in terms of exposure.
Okay, lens type. We have different lenses. We had wide and we have telephoto all the way through. So digital video, it's captured with lenses and uh, you know, different types of lenses do different things. And a wide shot gives you the wider shot. So think of even like fisheye. Telephoto starts to give you uh, real close-ups. So it's like a telescope. So that's the idea. Telephoto is like a telescope. Think of it that way. And it's based on the focal length from the front of the lens to the rear of the actual sensor. So here I make note, think of a telephoto like being a telescope. You can see the stars, while a wide lens is like a GoPro that can see everything. Think of it like the fisheye. Then um, most of our devices like iPhones, iPads, the photo cameras have zoom lenses. So you can also zoom in and out. And these are usually a digital zoom. So you're just like zooming in on, on an area. Uh, so you can go from wide to telephoto, essentially zooming in through these different ranges. Our camera kits through the libraries, we have uh, manual lenses that are fixed focal length. So for example, there'd be something like this, which is an 85 millimeter lens and that's fixed. You can't zoom it or change it. So if you wanna change the shot, you have to actually move the camera backwards and forwards. Again, a lot of fun to find your framing, to find your exposure, find your framing. And it's, it's a creative challenge and it's great versus just being able to zoom in and out and auto expose. So think of these tools as a, it's kind of, it's a great challenge to get into that manual exposure and uh, fixed focal lengths of zooms or fixed focal lengths of uh, our camera lenses. So video, you can do this with a personal device. So you can use an iPad and iPhone and they're great. So you can capture HD. Uh, a lot of the iPad Pros and new iPhones can shoot uh, UHD and uh, like Ultra HD and 4K. So the camera mode, you just go to the video mode and then you can zoom in. Uh, adjust exposure, select focus, and do all of those same tools like you can with a, a digital cinema camera. Uh, then we can also do video with photography cameras, so DSLRs. So we have the Canon 6D pictured here, is available at all three of our library partners, and you can shoot in HD. Uh, some can also work in 4K. And the beauty is that you can then use the same photo camera lens in this case, we have zooms, 24 to 105 millimeter zooms come on all our Canon 60 kits. So you can zoom from the wide, 24 to 105 telephoto. And you just simply go to the video mode on the Canon and uh, away you go. You can start shooting a uh, video. Then we have video with video cameras, digital cinema cameras. So you can use different video cameras. So we have the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, the, in the picture here, this is the 6K model, but there's the 4K and that's available through the library partners, uh, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now, the, the video cameras, what's great is they start to include more frame rates, more formats, lens options, and so on. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera appeared in uh, 2013, the original predecessor to the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and now it's evolved up to the 4K, and in this model, you can do 120 frames per second in HD. So you can do things like such as slow motion. That's the other thing you can do with video. You can also shoot slow motion. Uh, iPhones, iPads, so your smartphones can do that. You go to slow motion mode. What that means is, imagine this. If you shoot 120 frames per second, then you can play it back at, let's say, 24 frames per second. It's like, you know, uh, uh, slowing things down like eight times. So it's like, you know, so if I'm, if I'm moving like this, it's going to go, you know, slower. So they're shooting a lot of frames to, and then play it back as if it's slowed down. So we're used to seeing shots like that. Now remember, you're shooting a lot of more frames, so you need more exposure to get to expose those frames. Because 120 frames per second, you need, um, uh, what, uh, it's like 1 240th of a frame shutter speed, if you're familiar with shutter speeds, versus 1 48th for 24 frames per second. So way more light. So you need about, uh, about, five to six times more light in, in uh, shooting the slow motion. So if you're in a dark room, you won't be able to do slow motion. So just another uh, tip. Outdoors, you can do great slow motion because the sunlight's going to help us uh, deal with that uh, those parameters. So really exciting to be able to use these different technologies. So again, we have your own personal devices, photo cameras that you can get through all our library partners in the video mode you can use, and then the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which is this guy right here. This camera, uh, you get the whole kit. It comes with four lenses, a wide, all the way through to a, a 85 millimeter telephoto. So we have like a, a 16, 
a 35, 50, and an 85 is roughly the range of the, the lenses. You just simply put them on, you have manual lenses, and then you go. So that's how we can start filming right away and, and get through these uh, processes. So again, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, technical information, but how do we get this going? So this, this whole series we're calling, uh, you know, blank screen, because sometimes we just sit and we go, I have a blank screen. I don't know what to do. I want to make a film. So how do you start doing that? So we can start with writing a script or writing an idea. Maybe you just want to explore some ideas. It could be, you know, even just a visual essay. You want to explore, you know, apples. You want to explore uh, flowers. You want to explore urban, suburban life and, and through some video shots. So it can be a video essay. Maybe you want to explore a short story through actors. So you want to write, you can start with writing a script. That's how you can get rid of your first blank screen. Start by writing out what do you want to film uh, through digital video. Uh, then start exploring and learning with the you know, with the equipment and, and the tech that you have at your fingertips. So you can start with, you know, doing some shots maybe with your own uh, technology. So your own iPhones or smartphones and, and tablets or iPads. Try the different framing and shot sizes. Um, and then try different frame rates. Experiment with those. Explore underexposing, overexposing. Experiment with different focus points. You know, what's in focus? And you can, again, you can tap on your phone and say, hey, focus on this person. And it'll put the background out of focus. Uh, and then video production, it can always happen. You know, whether you just have a phone. You remember, you have a whole digital video production uh, tool suite. So you can, a camera and a editing suite in your pocket. And it's just amazing. And then, you know, or use a photo camera or a video camera. So start shooting some of this video. Uh, think of some of these techniques and you can rewatch this. So, you know, this whole, you know, lecture of, of concepts and frame rates and shot sizes and framing, it's all here as a resource. So you don't have to have a blank screen. We can now proceed with, let's get a bit of a script together. Uh, you can start to film and use the digital video cameras your own, go to the, one of the library partners, take out equipment from there, and we can start uh, uh, working on, uh, on digital video production and getting things started. So it all starts with, uh, you know, some sort of an idea you want to you shoot. Maybe the blank screen is like, hey, I just really want to learn more about digital video. That could be your starting point. You know, don't make it that you have to have necessarily a final film goal. Maybe you just want to you know, hey, I want to use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, try different lenses, try framing. That could be how you get out of the blank screen. Go in shoot different shot sizes. It can just be at a park. You can shoot wide shots, medium shots, close-ups, extreme close-ups. So you can get into like flowers or bark on a tree and start with the wide shot of the entire park and work in those shot sizes. Work with framing, work with exposure. Try it in sunlight, morning, afternoon, different times of day. So again, no you know, it's, there's no problem. You don't need to have a blank screen. Just get going and start uh, with these kinds of techniques, these tools. And like I gave that list, you can go and start exploring the technical. And from that, you get into the creative, get familiar, get happy with it, uh, comfortable with any of your, tech, your own technology or you know, the DSLR or the Blackmagic camera. Get comfortable with them, try things out. See what works for you. Sometimes you can do brilliant things on, on your own uh, iPhone that's right in your pocket and uh, you know keep capturing. Uh, and then the next thing, maybe you want to explore writing a, a script. So we have access, uh, you can access our uh, website, tbmcs.ca. We have uh, script and screenwriting uh, past workshops that you can rewatch on our YouTube channel. And we go over all the concepts there as well. How do you start a story, beginning, middle, end? How do you write? What's the format? So you get writing, that's great too. Maybe you just need a shot list. I wanna get these five shots, challenge yourself. I wanna get you know, a sunrise, a sunset, a hummingbird. You, know, you wanna challenge yourself with, with things. So no need to have a blank screen, just get out there, get going and, and understand that the, the technological things are there as, as artistic tools and there isn't really a right or wrong. It's more about experimenting and seeing what works for you. And what do you like? How do you like the look of it? Just like if you're painting, do you like oils? Do you like acrylics? Do you like watercolor? These are the same tools, the different devices, different frame rates, formats. It's like oil, acrylic, and watercolor. Just go and explore them and you say, hey, I really like painting with watercolor. I'm gonna do that. 
Maybe you're, then after a while you go, hey, I'm gonna try oil. I wanna see, you know, I wanna do a few uh, paintings in oil. And that's the same thing with video. I really like high frame rates and I wanna do, you know, shoot in, uh, in 4K. Or I really wanna do a whole bunch of slow motion shots in like HD and, uh, and make them, and have them a little bit grainy. I'm gonna go like lower light and play with that kind of atmosphere. Great, you wanna do a whole series of underexposed shots and you know, really push with mood and style like that. Perfect. That's just, that's exactly how we, we get going. The next thing, once you've shot, you will then offload footage and then you end up using software such as uh, the Blackmagic uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's totally free, you can download. And the studio version we have available in our digital arts computers that are available at each library. So there's two computers at each library. You go in there, public access, bring an external drive, bring the media that you shot or your device so you can offload it and then you start editing and then we get going and that's how we can get into production. But the first thing is to start using a digital video camera. That's how we get rid of the blank screen and get right into uh, starting with digital video production. So if you guys have any kind of questions, you can, here's my email. You can email me directly, tom at tbmcs.ca. Uh, if you have questions about digital video, um, you know, figuring out how, uh, you know, what it can be uh, or what, what tools you need or, or anything like that, um, you know, any, any questions about the equipment and, and how it works. Now, just to note, um, our equipment through the uh, Wasaga Beach Public Library and Blue Mountains Public Library and the Collingwood Public Library, we, there's proficiency tests for the, uh, the, fo the Canon 6D photo camera and for the Blackmagic 4K camera. You simply go to our website, uh, tbmcs.ca, scroll down, get to the camera proficiencies, do the proficiency test, and you simply watch videos, answer questions, get familiar with the basics so that you're familiar with how they work and how, you know, to make sure that you can be safe with them and to not, uh, you know, damage anything and just become familiar with them and how they operate. Then once you pass the proficiency test, we add your name to the library that you're part of, that you're a member of, and then you can go and access the equipment. So give yourself, you know, if you give us uh, 48 hours, we can have you up and running within that. So go and check that out if you haven't already. And then we welcome you to, to go and check out all this equipment. It's just like taking out a book and instead you can be doing digital video. So really hope you can uh, explore these, uh, these tools. So again, my email, tom at tbmcs.ca. Send me an email, happy to answer any questions. Uh, thanks again for joining me. It's been a great session. And again, there's no need for a blank screen. Let's get started with digital video production. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you guys soon. Take care.